Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to continue working on this swing component. And we're going to actually draw characters right in the middle of these cells, which is surprisingly tricky. But once you know how, actually easier than you might think. And I forgot to mention in the last video, if you want to know more about any aspects of what we're doing here, if you go to caveofprogramming.com, then you have, there are a load of courses here. Some of them are free. Some of them you have to pay for, I'm afraid, but they cover everything that we're doing here, basically in, in enormous depth. I want to make a bit of a change to this add state method so that we can have characters drawn on there. So I need, I'm going to actually keep this. I want this header to remain in this form because it, it's useful, but most of the code I'm going to transfer to a method that allows us to also specify the foreground color and a character to draw on the cell. So let's write color foreground and we'll just supply the character in a string because it seems a bit easier to me than having an actual uh, character type. So let's call this string character maybe. So now this original add state method that's just going to call this new add state method with some defaults. So it'll call add state like this and we'll pass through the state. The foreground will set to just color dot white. Background is the background that we've passed in and the character string will be empty by default. So it, at the moment, this should just work as it previously did and it looks fine. But now we can work on drawing a character here. So we need to do that before we dispose of the graphics 2D, the graphic context. And I want to say here, if character.length is not equal to zero, because if someone's passed in an empty string, then I don't want to draw any character on the cell here. On the other hand, if we have got a non-zero length, then we want to say g.set color and set the foreground color so we can proceed to draw a character now in the foreground color. And I also want a font here. So let's create a font that we can use. And I'm, since I'm going to be using that multiple times, I'll just do it here up, up the top somewhere. Let's say private, maybe static final font, font equals new font. That's pretty easy to create font. So here let's supply the name of some font family that's definitely on the system, like Arial or Courier or something. And then we can say font.plain or font.bold or italic, and we'll supply a size. I think with a cell size of 30 pixels, uh, a font, a 25 point font ought to look quite okay. So let's try that. So now we've got a font we can use. Let's go back to the code we were working on just a second ago. And here I want to say g dot set font and just pass in the font there to set the font. Now we can draw a character, but the, the difficult bit here is drawing the character in the right place. And by the way, in an earlier version of this video, I tried just drawing characters within the paint method uh, using draw string. And I found that method was so slow, I'd have to wait quite a while, maybe even five or 10 seconds before the window even appeared. So that's why I kind of went to this method of creating all these state images in advance. And then we've only got to draw a string a character. In fact, we've only got to draw that once on one image. So to actually get it in the center, I'm going to use something called text layout. And that needs a font render context. And I found this just by Googling the different bits of example code on the web. And I found something that did almost exactly what I wanted. And I just changed it very slightly. And now it works great. Let's call this FRC font render context and set that equal to g.get font render context. So that supplies information about rendering the font, apparently. Let's add the import for it. 
And then we can create a text layout that can be used for laying out text. Let's call it maybe text, maybe just TL, because we're only going to use it here. Uh, so cryptic names are all right in a very restricted scope, I would say. Let's create a new text layout like this. And we've got a pass now the stuff that we actually want to draw, which is going to be just character, the first first um, character in that string anyway. And then we want to pass in the font. And finally, the font render context like this. Now we can do layout dot draw to actually draw this text. And we supply the graphics context that we want to draw on. And we've got to supply X and Y coordinates. Now, how big's the cell? It is actually uh, 30 by 30. So we could put 15 by 15 to try to draw it in the middle. That's not actually going to work. Let's try 0, 0 and actually just have a look at this and see what it does. So I want to add a new state. Oh, yeah, I actually called this TL though. OK, let's add a new state with an actual character on it. So the order of arguments here is state, foreground, background, character. If I go to mainframe.java, let's add another state here. So this can have a red background. Let's give it a state ID of two. And the foreground can be white, background red, maybe, or even black might look nice. And for the, for the string that we actually want to draw, well, Let's try an asterisk and see how that looks. So if we run this now, I'm not even sure if this is going to appear, but let's just try it. Oh yeah, we've got to set the state though, so it won't appear yet. So you can see that that worked, sort of. Yeah, I mean, it did what it previously did. But what I want to do now is set a cell state on, on one of these at least. Let's maybe try this one. Set that to two and see how that looks. So yeah, if we run this, I almost Im imagine that I could see asterisks there somewhere, but let's get rid of some of these extra windows I've built up, make sure I'm running the right thing. But I don't think they're really, yeah, I think I, I can just see through this sort of gray margin a bit because uh, I've got like slightly transparent windows on this, on this Mac, but there's, there's nothing actually appearing in there. And if we go to, grid panel and try drawing it in the middle. Let's just try that just because I'm curious what it does. And then run that. So now you can see it, it, it is there, but it's in completely the wrong place. Um, so yeah, that's the only cell that we should actually see an asterisk in and it does appear it's the right color. It's in the wrong location. And to fix that, what we can do is now we can make use of this text layout to figure out where exactly it should be. So um, by default, I'm thinking, well, I, I should put it in the middle. So what actually is that? Let's work this out systematically. Let's say float and x equals cell size rather than hard coding stuff. I'm going to put cell size over 2 and float y equals cell size over two as well, because the height is the same as the width. And we should put these here. Now we've seen that that won't work. It's going to be in the wrong place. That's literally what we just did. But we can now make a, a clever adjustment. So I can say here, rectangle 2D, let's call it bounds equals text layout dot get bounds. And then, so this will give us the bounds of the text and we can use that to adjust these X and Y locations by subtracting, and I need to cast this to float, bounds dot get center. And we also want here for Y, we want to subtract bounds dot get center Y. And this should put our character right in the middle. Let's try it. And you can see it, that's actually pretty good. We could make it bigger. And of course, it's fun to try different characters here. Uh, let's try a question mark, for example. And if we run this, 
It looks it looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so now what we need to do in the next video is just to make use of the observer pattern so that we can click cells and change the state responsively when we click with the mouse. And then we've got a component that we could use for all kinds of things like cellular automata simulations or Minesweeper clones, for example. So do join me again next time and we'll probably next time finish this component off. And until next time, happy coding.